Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another homebrew equipment. I'm very sure this is a sine wave generator. And this look at the size, it's very, very nice and compact. And the fun thing is, I think we got an output here using beans, um, using banana in the front, but we also got a BNC at the back. Is that an output? I just took my ohm meter. There's no connection between the red one and the center pin in the BNC. So what? So the dial goes from one to 10. And here on the top, times 10 to 100k. So that means, yeah, that will be, that will be 10 hertz, right? So the lowest is 10 hertz, and then 10 times, so that is one megahertz, right? So let's just take 1k. Let's power it up and see what happens. <laughs> it's just a beautiful unit, really. So this this thing actually works. The frequency dial is a little bit off. So this is my one megahertz is like a little bit off, right? So this is 850. Let's hit and then it goes. This is the there's a of course this one needs to be operated a little bit right and then we go okay so it's only the top one so this is 99 kilohertz that's quite close right and let's go all the way down to one so this should be 10 kilohertz I mean it looks like it works And it's, I don't know, 10, 20% off the dial, but, and see, when you dial this, and it goes like this, and then it goes stable. Where is it? Yeah, it's this one. Ooh. I think that this is due to there's a little bit too much gain in the stabilizing system uh, of this oscillator. See, it's very, very critical, and then it goes stable. So you can't like you can't make a sweep like with this one. That's not possible because it goes like this. But you you, you can set it for something, oh. and then why is it this? Okay, the level works and. Also, the yeah, attenuator works quite well. I haven't figured out what the B and C is on the back. There's nothing coming out of that one, so I mean, we need to open and have a look. And there's no on-off switch, and the current consumption is only 2.2 watts. So of course you can just look at the very very dim LED. If you want to see if this is on, but it's like really heavy. So I think it is definitely time to look inside. Hang on a second. I think it is this classic wow sound that I just say every time I open some of his stuff. It is just amazing the time and the energy that was put into the hobby and the building and the design and everything it is just really really nice i mean this homebrew dude just really had a lot of fun making these there was put so much detail into the work here it's not just hammered 
together in a second like I've seen as well, but this is not what I see from him. Because look how well this is made. So this is just a power supply in, in one half of the unit. And it is absolutely the way it should should have been done. And there's... Well, the only thing I find a little bit funny is this the solder wire here and the tip of this transistor. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> but anyway, it's not. there's not going to get a loose connection. You know, it's so uh, maybe it's not that dumb after all. Now I know why nothing happens on the BNC connector. So that was probably a good, uh, good idea. That just didn't happen. Uh, so anyway, so this will be the power supply. And here, let's look at the oscillator. So that will be all the different ranges. That is done by different capacitors. And then the frequency settings, that's done with two pot meters. So this is a classic L, uh, I mean uh, RC, of course, RC oscillator, right? And then for amplitude stable, we have this um, filament and the heat of this filament, the current through this filament changes the resistance and this is how it's maintaining the same amplitude. So that is the trick. So this is actually a bulb. Um, yeah. So probably some of the transistors here are the timing constants around this um, filament compensation is a little bit crazy set, uh, a little bit too high gain to really want it to stabilize it. But that means when you're changing the, I mean, changing the frequency, it just goes absolutely crazy and needs to get stable again. So there is, uh, so this is the the filter and the output amplifier and all that but but see something here that's really funny this is the back side of the level don't you just love that one that's a pretty cute indicator so you can see from the back oh where is it when you're playing around with <laughs> with the design <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen that before and also the uh, I can't make this stay more stable. So here it's PCB and this is soldered for the top for good shielding and all that. And probably also he figured out that uh, maybe what if I need to add a few components here in the back. So better solder a piece here so it's ready. But it was never connected or uh, nothing really happened. So it's just there. Yeah, there's no... It's not covering anything or covering any holes or anything. But that's just a really, really beautiful oscillator. And the reason for this to be really heavy, this is quite thick steel and also the transformator. But even this one is really, really heavy. So it's like one millimeter steel and it's quite compact. So. This beautiful mark with the numbers and this is done with spray paint. See how well that is spray painted and so this knob is probably from some other product that was taken apart and reused for this. I'm having a party here. Let's look a little bit on the performance. So this is 20 dB per division. So that is like 50 dBc uh, for the harmonics. And that is really not bad even today. And of course, see what happens when I try and adjust the frequency. It goes like, whoa, unstable, and then it goes good again. But I think it maintained more or less. Let's go for 6 kilohertz here. Yeah. It maintained the 55 dB or like 50 dB C uh, performance, so 
It's absolutely not bad. And it's super, super cute. I really like it.